I am Alex Polizzi. I cut my teeth inside my family's international hotel empire and now run a multi-million pound food business with my husband. Last year, I battled to save six failing family firms. I don't know if it's ever going to get better. You must see some hope. Now I'm ready for a fresh fight. Hello. Hello. To save six more families on the brink of losing it all. Why has it got so bad? Because he won't talk to me. I feel like my dream is moving further and further away. But with the looming triple-dip recession, thousands of firms are going bust every month. Just in the last three months, you've lost about £3,000. I'm really struggling. The stakes could not be higher. Where is the money coming from? It's not just finance, it's family. Why are you walking away for? I can't work with someone like that. Everybody keeps pointing out. Stuff. You're the crazy you. one. You do nothing. <laughs> Something is very, very wrong. My first challenge is an interiors company facing its final curtain call. Look! Look at this! What about this suggests that you are not chaotic? Well, three retailing dinosaurs... No, 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 no. no. ...who can't agree on anything... Well, answer me a question. Okay. You'll see, you'll you'll see that... No, you're not going to see hold any. On. ...get dragged into the modern world. Shabby chic. It's like a different language. This is their chance either to change and prosper or to wither. Before the walls come tumbling down around them. It's been absolutely horrific. Must have been very bad in a previous life, that's all I can say. I'm headed to East Ham in London to enter the troubled world of interiors, a world which has seen £250 million wiped off sales in the recession. It's no wonder the Alfoni curtain and blinds business is in dire straits. The window coverings market has been very hard hit by the downturn in the housing market. For obvious reasons, blinds and curtains are mainly sold when people move house. It is one of a staggering 2,000 soft furnishing firms in the UK, all fighting for a share of a shrinking market. Competition is so stiff that a third of all curtain and fitting companies are making a loss. Prices are being driven ceaselessly down. It's very hard to make a profit. To make money, you need to be on budget and bang up to date. Papa loves I often hear comments say, you don't get shops like this anymore. Uh, so we feel that we are quite unique. Brothers Kevin and Lawrence Friedman... Good afternoon, Alfoni. ...have been working in Alfoni for over 30 years. And they do things the traditional way. Just like their grandfather, Mr Alfoni, did 93 years ago. We do run quite a traditional shop. East Ham is the second poorest borough in the country. Sales are hard to come by. Good afternoon. So they've piled the shelves high to try and cater to every local's need, however unusual. I want only one cotton. Mm. OK. It is a bit like going into a shoe shop and saying, I want to buy one <laughs> shoe. I always say to people, we want to help you, advise you, as well as take your money. But not all of the family are cut from the same cloth. Youngest brother Jeremy hates to even set foot in the shop I think it's very messy. It's literally just cheap, cheap, cheap. And I'll be honest, it depresses me. He's decided to do his own thing and has created a made-to-measure service called Friedman Interiors. And he is very particular about the way things are done. I am a perfectionist. I do like to make sure everything's absolutely as it should be. The pleats at the top are quite important and they have to be in line. I have an OCD on it. His ideas for the business are at odds with his brothers. They maybe see the business going in one direction, I see it should be going in another direction, stuck in their old ways, and it's very difficult to deal with. We do have spats, but Jeremy is hes a bit of a law unto himself sometimes. The brothers are at loggerheads, and the business is running at a loss. There are three families' mouths to feed out of our business. We're always under pressure. Let's face it, things are tough out there. The business is struggling. 
Now, I haven't had a pay rise now since my son was born, and that was nearly 12 years ago. I don't always see the light at the end of the tunnel. It does worry me that uh, the, the survival of the business. I have just four months to turn this struggling family business around before the curtain comes down for good on its 93-year heritage. Arthony, established 1920, so it's been here a while. Very unattractively displayed. There's blinds in the window, nets, shutters, swags, drapes. There doesn't seem any eye at all to window dressing. Things have moved a long way since 1920, but I'm not sure this store has. Hello. Hello, Hello. Alex. Hi, Alex. I'm Lawrence. Nice, nice to meet you. Nice to You're meet right. you. I'm Kevin. How are you? So nice to meet you. Well, I can see already, at even a cursory glance, there's an amazing variety of stuff here. Yeah. From floor to ceiling, there are hundreds of cheap towels, rugs and mats, distracting customers from what makes them nearly 90% of the money, curtains and blinds. There's so much stuff here. I'm already getting a headache. <laughs> the displays lack any rhyme or reason. It's impossible to find anything for yourself. Madness for a shop that relies on local footfall for two-thirds of its sales. Full mat, next to a carpet, next to curtain tie backs. Slightly schizophrenic. You would need a guide and preferably a map to know your way around here. They aren't shouting about their latest lines. Instead, the signs just scream cheap. Door mats, floor mats, dippity do, all very cheap and waiting for you. This isn't a showroom, it's just a storeroom, really, that happens to be open to the public. The shop looks bargain basement, but behind the scenes, things are even worse. This place needs a bloody good clean and a bloody good clear out. There's just stuff absolutely everywhere. Why? Just chuck it out. Get rid of it. What is in all these yellow bags? I couldn't even call this place a rabbit warren because, you know, rabbits are fairly clean and tidy. They certainly don't foul their own nests. Who is responsible for the complete disorder in the top stock room? I mean, it's like it's a... a room. You're right. Can I say something to you slightly brutally, which is that because there is so much schmutter everywhere, mm. the place is dirty. I'm saying this quietly because I certainly do not want to offend any of your customers or do sure. your business any damage. But you know, darling, it leads a damn good hoover. Okay. It does get done. The boys do it. They do get the hoover out, but whether they get into all the nooks and crannies, where once they were a profitable family firm, they are now running at a loss of thousands. And the mess of the shop mirrors the state of the accounts. Kevin is responsible for the books, but he can't keep on top of even the basic paperwork. This really horrifies me. But does Sometimes this like... not just create fear and loathing in your heart? Because I look at it and it... Um, unfortunately, I'm used to it. Lots and lots of... Bi this oh, I really gosh. do not believe in. Bits of paper bits of everywhere. Paper. No. That came in two days ago. That should have been in my statements file. A bill to pay invoice. That's an invoice which should be in my little invoice file there, which has crept out. This is a possible ah. quotation with no details on it. These are all orders. These have to be fitted. Actually, where's the fitting board? There's a fitting board here. See, Jeremy's just got all this stuff out and left it out there. Youngest brother Jeremy tucks himself away from the chaos downstairs. Oh, nice How are you? you? Now, am I right in thinking that you spend as little time as possible in the shop? As little time as possible, because I can't bear to see the way it looks. It doesn't look neat, doesn't look tidy. It doesn't show off our qualities and our capabilities. It depresses me every time I walk in here. A third of the sales come from his tailor-made curtains, despite their being sidelined in the shop. What's more, it's trade that doesn't rely on the cost-conscious locals. I'm the only one, I think, that 
continues to fight all the time. I want to make much more of the made to measure. But you know what, it's very difficult. My two brothers, their habits are still very difficult to break. So and it, makes, it does make me upset. Jeremy sounds like he's on the money. But just when I thought I had an ally, he reveals we're not as in tune as I'd hoped. I love doing swags and towels, they're beautiful. He's obsessed with chintz. Nobody but nobody does better pelmet swags and towels than us. This is a pair of handmade pinch pleat curtains, so that is all hand stitched. Mm -hmm. And the quality of those, I think, those pleats are beautiful. Well, you see, I find that very old fashioned. Okay. We're going to have to agree, but I'm happy to disagree yeah. with you. I can see the beauty in it, oh, don't good. get me good, wrong. Good. Thank you very much indeed. I'll get you your change. Thank you. This shop is old fashioned, is dirty, is cluttered, is disorganised. Paperwork is everywhere. Systems are chaotic. They are doing themselves and their stock a great disservice by having let things stagnate to this extent for so long. Sales have dropped a staggering 10% in the fabric and curtain market. If they are to survive the economic crisis, they need a clear business strategy. But Alf Oni can't agree on one. If I'm to resolve this crisis, I need to understand the family dynamic better. So I've come to their Shabbat or Friday night dinner. Amen. Good Shabbos. But scarily, there is a fourth voice of dissent, Dad Brian. Despite being semi-retired, he still owns 50% of the business, and he thinks they should ram even more stock into the shop. I'm saying give people choice. If somebody's spending a lot of money with you, and then they say, oh, I didn't think of you for rugs, do you sell them? Yeah, but of uh, course we sell them. The problem no. with rugs are they need a big space. Rugs can be shown in a round mm. situation. Oh. What, so I they don't. can look like a market store. What what I, I don't. don't I, no, I don't. definitely that's not. That, but that's how No, 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 no. Dad, Sorry, Dad, that's your that. downward thoughts, Jeremy. And I, what the shop is now. No. It's the shop now. No. It's a market store. Listen, the question is again, the business question. Yeah. Is this a good way to dilute your energies? Should you be concentrating on selling I, well, look, something I have that said, you know that you look, can really sell? Well, look, well, I don't necessarily agree with that. <coughs> As a product, I think, it's, I think it's an attractive, great to fall a good over. product where there's no wastage. You can. I, mean, we're I, disappointed in that, it wasn't I am worried that the boy's failure to see eye to eye is killing this business. I wonder if their wives, Debbie and Vanessa, can pinpoint the problem and give me an insight. The fashion of the shop hasn't changed. It's still stuck in the arc. It hasn't changed since the day they put it together, and I remember the day that they put it together because I was helping them to clean the shelves. Right. I mean, they, they want change, but they fear it, and that fear is just holding them back, which is natural. Yeah. This is going to be painful, but it's either change or die. My ultimate ambition is to get them to focus more on business from outside of East Ham, where there is money to be had. But before that, we need to focus on the basics. The first thing we need to tackle is the appalling state of their shop window. It's pretty obvious that the poor quality of their window display is their version of commercial suicide. To survive, they need to entice in a lot more customers. And basically, they're missing one of their biggest tricks. 50% of all high street purchases are made on impulse. But one look at this cluttered mess would send most window shoppers running for the hills. To give them some fresh ideas, I've enlisted the help of Neil Ellis from design company Planorama. He's done hundreds of stunning window displays for big name clients like Laura Ashley and Cartier. You've just got a few seconds to get someone's attention. Busy streets, people passing by, so you have to have a very clear message. It's as simple as that. But a lot of people get it wrong. Right. We know. Yes. <laughs> 
All of the shops on this trendy high street carefully select a few simple props to create a desirable lifestyle that customers can buy into. So, very, very simple display, yeah. using the crates yeah. and the olive wood items. It's very enticing. I think you're buying into an idea as well, so yeah. you might go in here and just buy a half a pound of cheddar or something. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. as you could get anywhere, but the fact is You've got that the you're, lifestyle you're, with you're it. Yes. I think it's quite aspirational. It's making us think that what we really want is this in life. The displays are also stripped back so that the inside of the shop can be clearly seen from the street. Yes, How important is it to be able to see into the shop? I think very important. You want to be invited into the store. Each window we've seen, the ones where you can see into the shop have made it, I think, more enticing. Yes, I agree with that. Amazingly, both Kevin and Jeremy sound amenable to doing things differently. But if we're going to move forward, I need everyone on board, including Dad Brian. The probability is that maybe our area won't be so affected well, sorry, as maybe this locality. I'm sorry, whatever bloody area you're in, People are aspirational. You always want the next best thing. You don't just want what you can have. You're already dreaming of the time that you can have something better. I will not let Brian scupper the momentum. Back in East Ham, it's time to apply what they've learned today to their own shop. Can we get this stand out of the way? Can you manage it? Yeah. It'll be nice to let some light and some air into the shop and kind of let it breathe a bit. It's making me very happy. It's like having a, a Christmas present given to me early, really. I expected youngest brother Jeremy to get on side, but I didn't think Kevin would be such a pushover. Up and away! Big change for us. All these years, generations and generations of cramming as much as you can into the windows. Incredibly satisfying. Does it not look more appealing already? It looks much bigger as well. Yes! It looks much bigger. Hi! General public, nice to see you finally. <coughs> Once the curtains, stenciling and props are in place, it feels like a whole new shop with a very clear and inviting message to everyone walking past. But one man still isn't happy. I can see that there might be some issues with my dad. The people in the area are not uh, as sophisticated and they may feel that because we're not putting very much in the window, we don't have very much. Let's Brian might be sceptical that the display is already making a splash with the locals. It's nice, it's beautiful. Very nice, I like Thank it. You. the colour. You like the colours? Yeah. Bring in your sizes, let us help you. Okay. We have a huge range of fabrics. I thought it was very interesting when those potential customers came in the shop. However sceptical Brian is, he saw the proof with his own eyes that a window display like that tempts people off the street. I may have succeeded in changing the windows, but it's only made it even easier to see the size of my next hurdle, the huge jumble of stock. Right. I want you each to get three items out of the shop that you don't think you should be stocking. Right. I'd love to see from each of you what you think the shop shouldn't be about. I shall await your return. OK. Yeah? Nearly 50% of the shelf space is piled high with sundries that generate just one-tenth of their sales. That's economic suicide. Heidi, hi. Howdy hair, darling. But I need the boys to agree on what to clear out. Fabric tablecloths. Mats. Oh, yes, And please. bedding. Yeah. Ready-made tablecloths. That's two in agreement on that one. Blankets. Doormats. Yep. Linens. Duvet covers. Yes. Snap. Who is responsible for, ultimately, for, for these items that you don't think should be here? Kevin. Kevin. <laughs> OK. OK. I think the point that we've all got to remember is if there was anything here that was flying off the shelves, you'd all be potty to have said, we need to stop stocking it. Sure. 
but actually you've got money tied up in stock that isn't working for you. Ultimately, we all know that you have to change to survive in this world. And especially in this climate where businesses are going to the wall every day of the week, if you want to be one of the lucky ones, then one has to become lean, mean fighting machine. Getting rid of the linen lines is a small victory, but Kevin just can't resist revisiting one of Jeremy's great bugbears. Well, I have brought out another item, but it's not one I want to get rid of, which are rugs. Not specifically this one, but rugs in general. I like the product to sell. I think it's quite a modern item that people will like. There's a lot of wooden floors. But whole shops just you, you do You need rugs. to fill the shop with rugs so that you can dis I've always said you don't do it if you can't do it properly. I think you if, can't we, do it if properly. we had a little section where we could display certain samples. My They've argument is very simply that you're trying to streamline. You can't be all things to all men. I, um, who's going to take them? I, I mean, the only... I, obviously, I, what I think... Rugs account for only 1% of sales, so arguing to expand them is madness. If these bickering brothers can't even agree on that, Alf Oni is doomed. I obviously... And just when I thought things couldn't get any more difficult, disaster strikes. Alf Oni has fallen prey to a plague of rats and they've chewed through the entire building's electrics. Alf Oni. I must have been very bad in a previous life, that's all I can say. Yeah, it's, it seems like two asteroids have collided. The last week's been absolutely horrific. When we suddenly realised that all the electrics are failing in the shop. Whew, big stress. The rat people came in and they spent nearly four and a half, five hours filling all the different holes that they could find. And then just as we were about to finish, I saw one rat walking from the back of the shop across one of the shelves and back down the back of the till. So we're by no means finished. We still have a big way and a long way to go. Finances were bad before, but with the clean-up bill running into tens of thousands, the family is now really on the brink. With every penny precious, they're forced to keep trading amongst the mess. Oh dear. <laughs> I'm sorry. I will get for you, but his emergency is delayed things. Very okay, yeah. sorry about that. No problem. Please treat this as a matter of urgency. It's, you know, we're in a terrible state here. With less than three months left for me to help their business, this catastrophe is a major blow. but it does provide me with an opportunity to launch a new business plan. I want them to expand their made-to-measure service to include large commercial premises. Hotels and schools can offer contracts worth hundreds of thousands of pounds. This could be vital for their survival, removing an over-reliance on the local budget buyers. To start them off, I've pulled a favor from the most exacting design director I know, my mother. Afternoon, dear. Very well. Thank One you. of her responsibilities is signing off contracts for curtains across the whole of our multi-million pound hotel chain. But would she be prepared to sign up the Alf Oni boys? I want to see whether they can compete on price. I want to see if they've got the patter. Um, I, want to, I want to show them, too, what contemporary design is like. A little bit of uh, nervousness, I guess. I'm a little bit... Uh... Yeah. I mean, it's not like the the normal hotels that are down the Romford Road. No. <laughs> so, this is a pretty standard room. All our hotels, we do the look that suits the country that the hotel's in. So this right. is supposed to be quite English, but not too pompous. Guests pay thousands of pounds a night for the top suites, so it's essential to focus on style to create that elegant five-star feel. But curtain nerd Jeremy has got all hit up about some very minor details. These are certainly not handmade. That's just chain stitched. What? 
What don't you like? Puddled. That's not puddled. It is puddled. None of it's weighted. I've never ever made a pair of made-to-measure curtains where I haven't put weights in. I think they'll be like almost, you know, sort of cheapening myself. Do, do you know what I mean? Oh my yeah, God, Jeremy, darling, I'm going to haul you out just, now. Uh, well, he's very particular in, in the way he likes things to be done. I don't know that your temperament could take doing a 130-bedroom hotel. No, no, no. Would you? <laughs> darling, it might drive you to the brink of this <laughs> breakdown. You'd be in a terrible state. I'm beginning to think bringing Jeremy to pitch for business to my mother may not have been such a good idea. You have to understand it's not quite the same as doing someone's house. Of course it has to be bloody good quality, the workmanship has to be good and it has to last mainly. But you know, having a conniption because it's not bloody weighted. Ultimately he just needs to find out what mum wants and tell her he can deliver it. Mum, please allow me to introduce you to Kevin and Jeremy hello, Friedman. Hello, hello, hello. My nice mother, to Olga Polizzi. Hi, hi, nice, 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 to, nice meet to see you. Come and sit down, Mum. Alex, of course, has told you that we're sort of not into fussy curtains, and you've seen what we've got here, really simple. This is a sort of Victorian hotel, and it had really heavy curtains. It felt like you were going to be eaten up by them. That's um, the kind of curtains he likes. <laughs> <laughs> Despite Mum's clear guidelines, Jeremy still thinks he can impress her with his most lavish swags and tails. Uh, I bought this system in about 15, 20 years ago. I believe it's the best swag and tail system that you can buy. It, it hangs, it drapes very nicely. And it's also on Velcro. On Velcro. You know, they're not a cheap item, but we, we do make beautiful swags and tails. Okay. Blabbering on about an antiquated style in a modern hotel will not win over clients like my mother. I'm worried that Jeremy might not be the driver for change I'd initially hoped. Maybe Kevin can do better with the price. Uh, three, four, one, nine, fifty. I mean, it's not cheap, but it's not top whack. So it's a sort of in-between price. Neither the price nor the styling have hit the mark, and the Alfoni offering is looking distinctly lacklustre. They're obviously very proud of what they do, and yeah. they do it well, and what they've done is good quality. But it's, it's not something that I would, you know, if I saw their work, I, I probably wouldn't go to them for um, curtains because... It's very old-fashioned. It's very, very old-fashioned. You know, this is the sort of hotel, a Victorian hotel, that could... Have take swags, swags and, and tails and we've got some very high windows and and yet even here we haven't done them um and i and it's it's also the materials they're using i know that um, ghastly they've that got brocade you know brocade is out dead in yeah the world. <laughs> i shall tell them you said so <laughs> Alpha Oni may have 93 years of heritage, but that's no excuse to continue on in the dark ages. And I've got less than three months left before I relaunch this business to the public. They are way behind the curve. Um, I mean, much of the design of the last 20, 30 years seems to have entirely passed them by. They really can't afford just to bury their heads in the sand and just keep on going as they have been, because otherwise Alpha Oni is honestly just going to remain a footnote in history. The time has come to tackle the fact that you're not very au fait with current trends. Mm -hmm. I think you're, you're slightly un verging on the unfashionable. I hate to say this and wound you deeply. I'd like to ask you a question. Yeah. Where do you get your information about that we are out of fashion, well, I suppose? Well, by seeing the kind of stuff that you produce, I suppose. <laughs> Jeremy has to be aware of the trends currently in demand if he's to win commercial contracts. I think we can afford to put the tiny little side table on and then we can crop through the orange mirror. I've brought the boys to a shoot in North London for the cutting edge interiors magazine Heart Home, so Jeremy can learn to talk the talk with professional interior designer Pippa Robinson. Lawrence, Jeremy, can Hi. I introduce Hi. you to Pippa? This is a shoot that we're doing called Cozy Bright. 
bold pops of colour and we've mm -hmm. used it on a background of grey. So, I mean, are you familiar with the trends? OK. No. Well, Cosy have... Bright has gone over their heads. How about the other key looks of the last few years? So, Shabby mm -hmm. Chic, um, have you heard of Shabby Chic at all? No. Shabby Chic, believe it or not, has been around for about eight years now. This one is, um, this is a bit newer, it's kind of like the Scandinavian Danish feel. All about the kind of very simplistic organic shape of accessories. Um, I tend to call it neutral look, whereas... Well, neutral is almost a different... Cold, but, yeah. Neutral is beige, yeah. basically, yeah. and sand. I guess it's word on that over the years, I've yes, learned. Neutral, and, and, earthy... Yeah. Um, to get the biggest contracts with people like Pippa, they need to understand contemporary looks. So I want them to practice creating a cosy, bright scheme of their own. I like that, Rob. Maybe I like that, Lawrence, that retro. I love retro radios anyway. You don't think, don't think it would no. match? Why? That's not retro. It's not, that's to me is... You think? Very traditional, that's not retro. No, oh, this is very modern now. Uh, no, no, no. No, no, I don't like oh. it. I mean, it is neutral, isn't it? It's very neutral. Yeah, I don't like it with Sorry, the, it's messy like chic. It, don't like it with the... It's not messy chic. Shabby chic, cosy, earth... Uh, uh, it's like a uh, different language to me. I'm starting to think I need to go to back to college. I think stick with... I don't think you need anything more... No, see, that's, again... No, you're sticking with oranges and pinks, bright it's oranges, all bright. Yeah, it's but all that, that that's stuff. not that's not a bright colour. That's a woody effect. You, I think that's got to, that. I wouldn't have that. It's out of place. I think it coordinates perfectly. You've got orange. It's wood. You've got orange. It's wood. Orange. But that's not orange. That's wood. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hello. Choice is made, it's time to redress the set and see if Pippa is at all convinced by Cozy Bright's Alf Oni style. Yeah, so, well, firstly, I think there's probably a little bit too much purple. It's, it's bright colours is about lots of different colours and if okay. I were to give you one whole look, it has got a bit of a purple feel about it. Yeah. So it's the balance. Do you think there's maybe a few too many accessories? Uh, yeah, this, this is um, too much. Loving the zigzag cushion, but perhaps you could have introduced some more of those colours in there. The cushion that's got love in it, it's a bit yeah. twee for this look. Not this right is meant to be strong, all, modern, graphic. So I'd yeah. say that, that's a no. Mm. And also the one with the flowering, bit pretty. Prop-wise, the wooden frames and pencil case, the colours right, but the material... It's not really right. <laughs> Sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm sure that you <laughs> think you know everything. <laughs> <laughs> it's very interesting. Uh, I'm not sure we got it completely right, but I really, I really quite enjoyed it. And it's given me a lot more food for thought. I think we've always been very stuck in that we've been brought up in the area where we trade from, uh, East Town, which is a traditional area. However. Um, doesn't matter how traditional a, an area is, there's always room for change. With the electric still out, the shop is a sinking ship, losing thousands of pounds a week and eating up what's left of their savings. But at least with a major overhaul needed anyway, it makes it easier to support Jeremy's plans for a dramatic change to the chaotic layout. So I've asked a leading retail team behind displays for Harrods and Marks and & Spencer to take on the job. I see a complete mishmash of fabrics, curtain samples. Uh, I'm not entirely certain of what their offering is, um, to be perfectly honest. Um, I, it, to me, it's just a mess, really. On my instructions, SFD have totally redesigned the space to be both aspirational and streamlined to create an enjoyable shopping environment. Now I need the boys to buy into it. Okay. Plans. It looks lovely. I'll be honest, I love the idea of the chandeliers, but Abercrombie and Fitch can keep those. I would have liked a sort of low-level table with a couple of chairs. Why? Could it be done like a wedge? This way, starting Why? flat. Why would you want to do that? so that to see into it, zigzag them, give it a bit of dimension, 
Um, and, and, and that's what I sort of think that we could do. Yet again, the boys don't see eye to eye, and this time it's my erstwhile ally Jeremy who's out on a limb. I would like to see a lot of changes. There are things in there I just really do not understand, and I don't particularly like the idea of either. It's just frustrating. And over the next few weeks, Jeremy's perfectionism means he wants to change every detail of the plans. I am particular. I am a person that likes to dot the I's, cross the T's, make sure it's as it should be. If being exact, it makes you difficult to work with, then yeah, I am difficult to work with. With Jeremy's persistent meddling, the whole venture is at a standstill. A design still hasn't been agreed. With the shop fitters on the verge of pulling out, and now just a month from the relaunch, the only way forward is for me to step in. I shouldn't be surprised, really, because as we know, Jeremy, Kevin and Lawrence are many good things, but they are also completely chaotic, extremely disorganised and can't agree on anything from one day to the next. So it has delayed the whole process enormously. At several points, I thought we were going to lose SFD. But I want to make sure that we're now on track. I know how difficult it has been to get a decision on everything. Get everything <laughs> moving. And I also understand that this is a bastardised design, mm. to be polite. Mm. Has there been lots of toing and froing? Have they changed their mind about decisions? You could say that, yes, yeah. quite a few times. Yeah. <laughs> version one, version two, <laughs> version three. <laughs> so there's kind of been input from all three of them, which is great. Obviously, they want to be involved, but unfortunately, their opinions are actually conflicting with each other and you tend to get caught in the middle trying to find a way through. Jeremy's a very passionate guy, exactly what he wants in his store. I guess that's... Yeah, but it's fine to be passionate. Everybody's passionate about their business, but at the end of the day, they've got to make some money. And unfortunately, that pattern comes out as him appearing like a massive pen in the arse. Exactly, yeah. Which I don't yeah. think is very helpful for anybody. No. I am really bloody cross and I intend to go steaming into them and make it absolutely clear to them that they are not to throw a spanner in the works at this point. When I send you to someone who is an expert in shop fitting, you know, you could occasionally be gracious enough to think that somebody knows better and accept that I'm doing my damnedest to improve your bloody shop. Yeah. And instead of constantly going back and kind of picking bits and not being clear, I mean, they feel like well, you well, haven't been hang clear. Hang on a minute. If somebody says that we haven't been clear and we've mucked about... I find that entirely possible because you are not clear. You are confused. Okay. Well, you are with chaotic. With respect, I completely disagree with you. I mean, you. look at the... Look! Look at this. What about this suggests that you are not chaotic? I'm so, really sorry, Alex. I'm really upset that you've come up like I'm that. I'm upset. I'm yeah, upset. I, well, you I might be, but I I'm think, the, you know, one the one that is being held responsible, and I know that I was very clear, very concise. Well, you certainly shout very loudly, darling, yeah. but do you understand the implications of all the decisions that you're making? Yes. I try and tell them exactly how we want it in the first place. It's not displaying cheese. It's not displaying a book. It's displaying fairly... You don't even work in this shop! Why is it channelling through you? I want to know that from you two. Why is it going through Jeremy? Why? Because the... the actual fitments part, the installation of the actual... the actual, actual detail, <sighs> detail of the fitments... Honestly, guys, you've been here a long time. Mm. You've never fitted out the shop. I'm offering you... I've offered you expertise, so it's not just me drawing on the back of a fag yeah, no. packet. And I feel, actually, you know, I really do feel like walking away from it at this point and saying, fine, you don't like it, you're not happy with it, you're not happy with them, they're certainly not happy with you. Should we just say F and leave things as they are? <laughs> had all these years to do whatever they want to the shop. I come in, suggest that they get it done, give them a plan of action, and he is nitpicking.
It's the first day of the installation. With my faith in Jeremy at an all-time low, I've told him to stay away from the shop fitters. Sadly, he's got other ideas. I want to just keep an eye and just make sure that everything's going to plans and, and uh, that nothing's been forgotten or lost or missed out. Is one bracket enough there? There's some more there, mate. Oh, he's brought you down. OK, fine. Yeah. <clears throat> That's badly delivered. Lawrence, make sure you sign that as box open, please. Not inspected. I'm just thinking if we could take the pan off, John, and then cut it into suit. So, and then put it back on. Why can't, why can't you just cut a slot in there for that? When the made-to-measure fixtures arrive, Jeremy thinks he's been shortchanged. That's how it was on the drawings. Well, that's not how I said it. How am I going to get to them? It's not going to work at all. Well, it will. Well, it isn't how I told them I wanted it. Well, I wanted them all the way along. Yep, I know what the drawing said, but that's so, not how... You've seen the drawings, then you should have said something. Well, I didn't know. You I mean, said you've seen the drawings. Yeah, I, all it says on the drawings is just no, hangers. No, no, it's, it showed them on here. I, I don't know what's happened here, but it's certainly not what I'd discussed. It's not what I planned at all. I'm thinking these aren't even going to be able to be used. I no, think aesthetically they'll look better. You can get 10 or 20. No, I think you're completely wrong. Oh, I, I... You're, all you'll do is see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hangers. Yeah, but the that's way you're thinking, thinking of it, you're not going to see any of them. You will, because that's how we were doing. How are you going to see any one? Right, well, let, well, well oh, Answer me a question. Hold on. How you see, you'll see, you'll see the eight. No, you're hold, not going to see any. Hold on one sec, hold on. Put them in. We'll say, and if you need to change Lawrence, and put the button, units are standing listen, on top of them. Just listen, one sec. You won't be able to get them off. Jeremy's very pedantic on how he likes things to look, so yeah, yeah. I just, uh, just really want to see the end of it, to be honest. The layout of the shop is in disarray, but with the relaunch just round the corner, I can't get sidetracked. They have other big problems too. Jeremy's made-to-measure business has been trading as Friedman Interiors, whilst the shop has kept the Alf Oni name, which I think is madness. It seems quite evident to me that there is a tussle in the family, and that has resulted in there being two very distinct halves to this business. It's a huge mistake that these two sides of the business don't work together as a cohesive whole. I've brought the boys to award-winning marketing agency Elvis to help resolve this fundamental split in the business. Kevin at least seems keen to play ball, but is surprisingly willing to drop their 93-year association with their grandfather's name. I think the name Alfoni, people that aren't familiar with that name will not understand it. They won't know what that name means, what type of business it reflects at all. I, I do think it is time for a change. I, I feel that strongly. John and Anna have led campaigns for international brands like Virgin, Honda and Sky. So the boys would do well to start listening. So visually there's a lot that we need to sort out. But um, before we even get into that, I kind of think the bigger issue actually fundamentally is it's kind of the name. Heritage is everything for you guys. You've been there for so long. That's interesting. Um, and Alf Oni, we liked for lots of reasons. One, it's just a bit more distinctive. It feels quite East End. It feels kind of part of who you are. And we sort of felt that actually that was, to be honest, Mark comes a bit of a shock, a stronger part uh, from a branding point of view than Friedman Interiors. But I'm not necessarily in agreement with that. What does Freedom and Interiors say to you? I mean, what is it? It's just, it's so well, generic. It, well, it sounds more generic. I mean, Alphony sounds very personal. We believe it's not necessarily the name that needs to change. It's the way it looks. It's the way you express it. Well, the boys already seem resistant, but I'm hoping that they'll be won over by the agency's bold designs. This is our third and preferred version. Um, and like John said, I think it sort of marries everything in together that we're trying to represent for you guys. <laughs> no, 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 no. Where's my curtains? We want to talk about the craftsmanship and the heritage that goes into what you do rather than visually trying to show the product that you create in a logo. It's incredibly difficult, uh, especially because it's something so ornate. I don't so, agree with that yeah. because for me, that says curtains. Well, I think that looks just naff. I don't agree. I think it's important. That to me looks like a tap. 
seeing something is better than reading something, right? An image. Actually, yeah. these are branding experts, I so know. they do understand how important the visual is. I realise it. Mm. I've always wanted a logo, but I want it to be the right logo. And you want it to be curtains. Something. Well, <laughs> really? well funny enough, that's what we make. Yeah. We make curtains, we make blinds. The boys are in danger of sabotaging yet more expert advice. This time, I won't let that happen. If we can't get it right now, it won't be ready for the relaunch. The reason that the shop is such a mess is because no one has sat them down and made them make a decision. And this is the point where they have to make a decision and they have to decide on the way forward. You have to accept that there are other people who know more about something than us. We're here to help, but yeah. uh, we need to really understand exactly where your heads are at. Um, I really want us to walk out of this room in 15 minutes with a plan. The representation of curtains in whichever fashion we choose to, to progress um, is going to be key. I'm going to kind of go into bat for the colour, because I actually, the purple, I think it's really strong, and I think it will work particularly well inside the store where you've got lots of other colours that are kind of surrounding it. So I kind of think, actually, if we um, put those elements together, then I kind of think we're in actually not too bad a place. What do you think? You look like you've been hit over the head twice with a baseball bat. Look at him. <laughs> do you, are you Sorry. feeling bullied? No, uh, I don't mind if you are. We think if we're going to have a complete, almost a, 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 a change, a reinvigoration, then, yeah, I think that that, that, can, that could certainly work. Yeah, yeah I'm I mean, happy if, to, to try. Good. It certainly work. Brilliant. Yeah. Let's just take That's it. Let's just, I think that's as good as we're going to get. Let's take it. Yay! Jeremy may have got his way with the curtain logo, but at least they've agreed a design. And they've signed up the colour and are keeping the name. I had to really bully them into making a decision. But we have to make decisions and move forward. Otherwise, they're going to be stuck in the glue of the past, which is where they've been stuck, as far as I can see, for the last 20 years. And I honestly think that this is their chance either to change and prosper or to wither. And there's another step in the right direction. They seem to have learnt from their earlier mistakes and Jeremy has managed to land a trial commercial contract with the University of East London. Kevin's making a delivery of a batch of 15 tailor-made curtains. Hello. Hi. Tape top. Yep. Flame retardant tape as well, oh, actually. Okay, okay yep. so I've got that in for you. And okay. we've waited yep. those in for you as well. Oh, well, you have, haven't you? Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Fantastic. Brilliant. Students can get some sleep now with the sun out. It'd be nice. Perfect timing. <laughs> for now, the order is only worth £1,800, but with 1,100 rooms, if all goes well, it could be a gold mine and drastically reduce their reliance on local footfall. It's all right. They really have been excellent. I've been really, really pleased with how they've worked. Really knowledgeable about what was available in such a short period of time. So, yeah, I've been really pleased. It's one good step forward, but with just two days before the relaunch, the shop is still a total mess. Even the dreaded furry friends are back. This time, they're making quite a different impression. That's quite that is, that unbelievable. Is, is, it's ratatouille. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's revolting. Inside the shop, it is no laughing matter. Jeremy has changed the designs yet again, and he's still not happy. Is that what he's thinking of doing? Yeah. Oh, my God. But the biggest stumbling block is not Jeremy's fault. A problem with the delivery is threatening to completely derail the relaunch. Oh, no. <sighs> this is just impossible. We are really in trouble with this, aren't we? Nobody ever does quite what they say they're going to do. I've got no ready-mades to show. I've got no blinds to show. So it's like three quarters of the business is not being shown. Lord knows how I'm going to get everything merchandised and displayed. It's just a nightmare. The one positive thing is just how hard Jeremy and his brothers are working to bring their shop into this century. But time is running out.
It's the day of the relaunch. I'm very worried in case Jeremy's meddling has made a complete pig's ear of this. I really have no idea what I'm walking into at all. But for once, it's me that's in for a shock. It's like a different place. I just can't believe it. They've done the ironwork. They've done the signage. Look how light it is. It looks enormous. I'm so thrilled that they agreed to adopt this branding. I love the colour. I love how clear the lettering is. I mean, honestly, it's, it, it's, it's come into this century. Hello. 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 I can't believe it. I'm so excited. Hi, hi. It's so oh. lovely to see you. Oh, my. It's so lovely to be here. I can't believe this. It looks enormous. No. I had no idea I was going to be so excited. Oh, I, good. I, good. We, we are so thrilled to hear that. Oh, yeah. Honestly. Darling, yeah, I've got, I feel a real like a little tear behind my eye. Oh. Let, it roll. <laughs> Let it roll. <laughs> Let it roll. I'm amazed that despite all the last minute changes, the results are still truly stunning. As well as having an initial wow factor, the shop is now clearly split into easy to browse areas. Jeremy's made to measure display makes a real impact with its color coordinated pods and on trend fabrics. They look fab. They even have interior design tips for any extra accessories. Most importantly, the mountains of blankets, linens and doormats have been consigned to the skip. And there is the space to enjoy what they do best, curtains and blinds. I had no idea that you were going to manage it so well. I really didn't. I was quite nervous. That no. sounds rude, doesn't no, it? No, no. But it is No ruder than normal. <laughs> <laughs> it's an incredible transformation. But in the rush to get it finished, one or two things have been brushed under the carpet. <laughs> Dirty little secrets. The boys have really pulled it all together in the last few days, but a sparkling new shop with no one in it is no use to anyone. Yeah. I want them to spread the word of their revamp far and wide, so they're using their heritage to try and stand out from the crowd. Come see our grand opening! Curtains and blinds at Alf Onnies. Come and see our family business, Alf Onnies. We're reopening our new showroom today. Family business, curtains and blinds. Your home, your offices, come and see. Alf Onnies, new curtain and blind showroom. But just hitting the locals won't cut it. For this business to succeed, it's the commercial contracts that really count. So they're inviting the biggest regional players. Nice We'd like to invite you down and we hope you can make it. Yes, it's a pleasure. It looks like word of their transformation has even got them in the press. I think the boys may have managed to pull it out of the bag. But in the end, it's not my opinion, but that of the paying customer that really matters. We now declare the showroom open. My family have been coming here for five generations, so I love our ponies anyway, but this has made it that much easier to browse. They're always on hand to help and advise, and I think it's just lovely. The curtains on the ceiling, they block the light up. You have to duck under them to get through, and now they've got rid of them. Although there's not so much on display, you can actually see more of what they have got. It looks like modern. It, you know, it's, it's vibrant now. Yeah. The new upmarket look is proving a hit with the locals. And commercial clients with contracts worth thousands of pounds have also come for a look. 
Doing? People who deal with the contracts for various universities, designers, lettings agents, and from the council, who I know the boys have been desperate to get hold of. I think tonight's been a great opportunity for them to meet us and just put names to faces and, you know, to work with local companies and local shops like this would be brilliant. So, yeah, I think it's definitely been really good for them and for us to meet. You've put that effort in and so it's all on your backs and, you know, guys, you're going to go from strength to strength, I know you are, to Alf Onids in the next 90 years. Ah! The process has been incredibly hard, but we've done it and it's exactly how I wanted it and um, I'm really delighted and grateful to everybody that's played a part in it. Seeing people startled and surprised at the transformation of the shop, uh, it's been great. I knew it would all come good in the end. Dad Brian has had some doubts along the way, but is he won over by what his sons have achieved? Um, very proud of my sons. They've turned out something I think is fantastic. Couldn't believe that it could be done, but it is superb. I feel really enthused and happy that this has been such a good result. They're set up much better now to service commercial contract work. They're not going to put off their local customers. I think the future looks pretty rosy for Alphonis. Once the dust has settled, are the brothers still bickering or is business booming? Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Sometimes it's easy to slip back into your old habits, but now we've made a determined effort and boxed each other's ears if one of us has perhaps gone down that road. Customers have been really surprised. Eyes have lit, lit up and they think it's quite a transformation. We've had mornings where we can't cope, it's been mobbed. I think it's been the wow factor really for a lot of them. There's one or two that think probably the prices have gone up. <laughs> very nice, very, very nice. Mm -hmm. Good. It's now. posh. Posh shop, right? It needs to be posh. OK, OK. Well, posh shop, but not posh prices. Yes, that's true, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> They may not be cutting edge, but the biggest increase has been in nets, which have contributed nearly a 10% growth in sales. We've been really busy with net curtains, which I think is definitely a result of the way that we've displayed them. They've even updated their antiquated account system to finally join the 21st century. We'll probably wonder why I hadn't done it a long, a long time ago. The commercial push is paying off too. Jeremy's won another big contract, this time with Redbridge College. It could be the beginnings of an Alf Oni empire. We have 84 classrooms at the college and executive areas and staff rooms. We've got blinds everywhere, so uh, I think we'll keep them busy for a while. It will tilt either way. The slats must always be in this direction. Then you can pull the slats along. But however big they get, Jeremy will always be on hand to dot every I personally. Perfect. Small enough to care, yeah. big enough to cope. Do you know what? I'm going to use that as my next hook. <laughs> and I'm astonished to see he's now even happy to serve in the shop. The recess will be gone on the outside. Then this is really nice as well. These are veneers. But perhaps that's because he got what he wanted. I have to say, one of the nicest things is that I've got my way. I wanted rid of the linens, I wanted rid of the rugs. With the contacts that we've got now coming through, I'm very excited for the future. If you thought that was a struggle, don't miss another day in the life of the planners, taking on all comers and not always winning. That's Thursday at 8. Tonight, a nightmare in organisation in the railway, keeping Britain on track. <laughs>